But there's a um, significance to uh, these shelves, and that is that obviously you're seeing a lot of the legacy of JBL mm -hmm. right here before you uh, in cross-section form. And you can see sort of like the iterations um, of speakers. I'm not sure how old this is, but, um, but this is uh, very, very old. It says Lansing Manufacturing on the back. And um, it says Los Angeles. Wow. So the Lansing family lived on South McKinley, just downtown, south of downtown LA. Okay. And da south of downtown LA. South Central now. Yeah. And so that was their that was their home, and there had been um, numerous Lansing manufacturing. So this was hand put together. Yeah, you can see the screw markings where somebody actually screwed that on there. Yeah. So in the evening time, the Lansing uh, the Lansing family would um, do a lot of the small um, assembly of these uh, speakers, and then they would go to the factory in the morning, and then finish uh, finish the assembly in the in the factory. So it truly was a, a family affair. Family endeavor. So you've got the the speaker assembly back here. There's your speaker where you would plug the wires in, just screw them in from the amp, and then here's this magnet, which probably weighs about six, seven pounds, yeah. maybe maybe more. And then what in essence is a horn of sorts that the that would expand on the speaker. The high frequencies come out into this crazy diffractor. And uh, we talk about diffraction, but basically these little holes force sound to spread out and then actually get wider than it was otherwise possible. If this little grill wasn't here, it just kind of comes out. But this, because of the nature of physics, creates uh, each one of those holes spreads the high frequencies out. Now, what they probably discovered, because this is pretty old, what year was this, you think? Yeah. What they discovered is that this probably diffracts high frequencies really, really well, but the upper highs not so well because of the tiny little holes. So over the years, they've made these bigger and bigger and bigger so that, you know, the nature of physics with higher frequencies and mid-high frequencies um, isn't the same. So, uh, I mean, the tweeters that you have now on the Series 3 and the Series uh, 7s have an enclosure that basically handles it all. So, but this is like... Vintage stuff, incredible. The potato mashers, they call them. The potato masher. I uh, come in in the morning and I seriously I do my I do my curls with the seriously? old stuff. You know these magnets. Um, that's uh, the bulk of the weight of a speaker system is that magnet. Let you hold onto that one. Yeah. And when you put it back down, make sure your fingers are free of the bottom of it. Because when it snaps to oh, the metal, so, yeah, like, go, go. yeah, I've pinched myself a couple times putting that magnet back. So you can see this is basically a cross section of a coil. You can see this these, this stuff here in motion. I'm not actually sure what this would go. This is the this is a tweeter, yeah. cross section of a, of a older tweeter. Yeah, I think so. This, yeah, so it would cut out, and you can see they're trying to again do a diffractionary uh, mounting of this of this speaker coil uh, before they decided to go to domes, which is what we use now. But uh, yeah, if we do this. This, this probably weighs a couple, three, four pounds, yeah. something like that. But you know, I'm going to put this down. You ready for this? <laughs> Snap your yeah, you that would do a pretty good job on you if you didn't know any better. And that's, you know, the nature of magnets is that they attach those things to the speaker coils, a speaker woofer or the whatever, and that voltage hits the magnet and forces the speaker back and forth tens of thousands of times a second. It's amazing. Yeah, it's one of the coolest things in the world, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's pretty. Well, it's all here in full display, and you know, engineers can also use these as reference too, mm -hmm. right? So if they need a, a reference point.